Hi, good morning all. Welcome to the webinar on career opportunities in healthcare. My name is Vishal Sena. I'm heading business development for Apollo Medicals Limited. First of all, thank you all for your overwhelming participation and registration for the webinar. In fact, we have opened the YouTube channel live for this broadcast as well. Today, I have with me Dr. Pulijara Srinivas Rao, a versatile and a multifaceted doctor who is an internal medicine doctor and a management graduate from ISB Hyderabad. Dr. Srinivas has over 20 years of experience having worked with leading names in healthcare like Apollo Hospitals, Siemens Healthcare, Space Labs, and Apollo Munich Health Insurance. Dr. Srinivas is a visiting professor at IM Bangalore for management programs as well. Dr. Rao is now the CEO of Apollo Medicals Limited. And in the next one hour, he will be addressing questions related to careers in healthcare. Over to you, Dr. Srinivas. Hello, yeah. Good morning, everyone. And uh, I really thank everyone for taking your time for this session today. And we all know healthcare has always been a priority sector for any country, and all the nations thrive on well being of its people. So India is no exception to it. And uh, it is time for us, all of us, to look forward and look how the healthcare needs should be met. Uh, particularly after this tiring times post COVID. So, uh, we all know that healthcare is also a largest sector, both in terms of revenue and employment. And India has been traditionally the largest supplier of healthcare workforce across the globe. So, today we will look at um, some of these career options for uh, in healthcare at all levels, right, right from the 10th class student to a super specialty doctor who is working in a hospital. Thank you, Dr. Srinivasra, for the introduction. Uh, I would like to uh, inform everybody that we have got uh, a huge number of queries, and we have tried to uh, prepare a list of questions which cover all these areas. So in fact, there have been more than 1,000 queries for the webinar. Thanks a lot again once, once again to all of you. So the first query, Dr. Srinivas, is uh, what are the career options and roles in healthcare? So could you please explain us the roles in healthcare institutions, including hospitals and other verticals? Thank you. Okay. Um, so healthcare actually has got multitude of opportunities and uh, roles can be uh, layered into a, a, about nine uh, levels. And I would like to showcase one slide in order to explain and for a better visualization of audience. The IT team can showcase the slide, uh, please. Yes. So uh, everyone, if you look at this slide, okay, you, it's, a, it's a slide which is, you have a pyramid there. And on the top of the pyramid, if you see on the top of the pyramid, you have DM and MD and MCH. So these are super specializations in healthcare. So these are super specialty doctors who sit on the top of the pyramid. And these uh, doctors are either cardiologists, neurologists, the plastic surgeons, and uh, such super specialist doctors. And uh, below that layer, you have MDMS doctors, which are the specialist doctors. So there are about eight specializations, um, uh, which are called specialist doctors. These are MD general medicine. You have MD pediatrics, MS orthopedics, then MD gynecology and obstetrics, and so on. There are about eight such specialities which constitute the MD and MS specializations. Then below that, you have uh, MBBS doctors who are general practitioners in India. Uh, the, the, the most of them practice as general practitioners and across the globe they practice as primary care physicians. So uh, then below that, that top three layers are the doctors and below that you have nurses. In the nurses again you have uh, multiple layers. You have um, a graduate nurse who is either a BSc nurse or a um, GNM, general nurse midwifery. And you also have specialty nurses there who do MSc in nursing. And then you have a layer of healthcare management, healthcare leadership, and healthcare operational resources. And you also have other clinical resources like uh, physiotherapists, pharmacists, who also form a layer there. And below the layer, you see allied health and paramedical. These are the uh, these are the healthcare resources who actually work in healthcare institutions as technicians. And uh, the X-ray technicians, CT scan technicians, the medical lab technicians that you see. There are about, if you see on the right hand side of the slide, you have the number of roles for them in the hospital. There are approximately about 46 roles for uh, allied health and paramedical and the support services. 
At the bottom of the pyramid, you see a large number of resources who are support service resources, and they form really a base of the pyramid. These are the people who are uh, kind of the laboratory technicians, the pharmacy assistants, the emergency medical technicians, the uh, the the resources who are actually in the housekeeping. So they all form, and the geriatric aids, the home health aids, which are emerging. So these are the support services. So these are the various roles that are spanned across the healthcare industry. So right from a super specialist doctor to a housekeeping executive who keeps the who play a very critical role in infection control. So every role has got a significance, and every role is a frontline role in healthcare. So when I say very important, like the the important that a plastic surgeon or a cardiologist has the similar importance you have a housekeeping executive uh, who maintain the infection control and who maintain the quality guidelines in the hospital and of course needless to say the role of nurses uh, and the role of uh, the technicians and the lab technicians and the emergency medical technicians um, in the healthcare and the layer of healthcare management is uh, gaining a lot of significance because this particular role is responsible for the administrative side of the hospital. So I'll speak more about it as we move forward. Um, Vishal, I hope I have addressed the query briefly. Uh, we could move on to the next question, please. Yes, yes. Thanks a lot, Dr. Shinivas, for highlighting the various job roles within the healthcare sector. It is, it is very important for the audience to know what are the various job opportunities in the sector. Coming to the next question, which many people have asked, uh, with COVID-19 changing the delivery paradigm of various industries, so what is the impact, uh, Dr. Shinivas, it will have on the healthcare sector? Thank you. Yeah, oh yeah. I think uh, COVID is uh, definitely a war of our generation. And um, we are we are being really tested. I think it's the biggest test that humanity has faced so far. The only thing that we need to do now is actually accept the change. It's very important to accept this change. And you will have new normals in the way healthcare is run. When I say new normals, um, I want to structure my answer into what are new normals in various um, facets of healthcare. So what is a new normal in a hospital? What is a new normal in the healthcare ecosystems? What is a new normal for the patients? And what is a new normal for the digital systems that are coming up in healthcare? So now um, you see a change right from the infrastructure planning. So the hospital will now restructure their facilities with quarantine beds. And the future of hospital planning will also have some dedicated real estate for quarantine rooms. All the patients coming to the hospital now will have norms of social distancing and thorough thermal screenings at various points. So uh, a hospital will screen your temperature at multiple points, just like you get screened at uh, malls. And this could be, become a new normal in places where there are social gatherings. And every patient coming to the emergency, this is very important. Every person coming to the hospital for an admission walking into an emergency or brought to an emergency will be de facto triaged and screened for COVID-19. So before any admission to the hospital, every patient coming in will be screened for COVID-19. The emergency load will continue because still in India today, the leading causes of mortality or leading causes of death are heart attacks, stroke and the pulmonary diseases. So the patients continue to come, but this is going to be a new norm, uh, kind of screening the patient. And we will see more of remote monitoring of patients with personalized telemonitoring um, installed in all the wards and rooms. So now you start seeing, uh, generally a doctor will go for rounds um, twice a day, morning and evening, especially if doctor will go and see a patient. But going forward, probably I think one visit will be a, a direct face-to-face -face contact with the doctor, probably the second visit will be a telemonitoring. And one significant change in the medical community, both for doctors and nurses that we see, I think going forward, all the ICUs, the intensive care units, and all the critical care units will be manned by doctors who are below 45 years. I think um, this is going to be a new norm. This has not been defined yet, but I'm assuming that because people with higher immunity will, work, will man the, um, the intensive care units. And the senior doctors will continue to complement it by remote monitoring and by guiding the junior doctor. And the healthcare staff may be carrying immunity passports in future, like uh, a periodic immunity check can be done for doctors, nurses, and every healthcare professional who is working in the hospital. And we can expect um, they, they need to carry an immunity passport along with us uh, to work in the hospital as a healthcare staff. 
and it is very important when I say the the, the patients are walking the screen because the screening is important because it is not just to safeguard um, yourself as healthcare worker. We also need to safeguard the other patients in the hospital. So that that uh, gives a sense for why we are screening everyone who are coming to the hospital. When you come to the outpatient department in the hospital, there's an inpatient, there's an outpatient, right? We have seen this, uh, we are expecting a 60% reduction in the outpatient consultation. And um, uh, we have already seen a rise at Apollo Hospital. We have seen about 2,500 teleconsults each day, which is a drastic rise from about 200 consults to a 2,500 consults each day, almost 10 15 fold increase, and it is expected to rise more. And in terms of changes that you see in the consumers and patients, I think the social distancing is going to be the new norm and it will continue for, for some years. And uh, there will be more civic sense, better hygienic practices and frequent hand washing from the patients. And uh, the consumers will try to adapt better lifestyle. This is this is an expectation that because you have to take care of your own health. So this, the people are expected to have better lifestyles or have better food practices so that they keep their immunity high. And if they keep their immunity high, once they get protection from the infectious diseases, but at the same time, it will also have a cascading effect in the reduction of non-communicable diseases because you have a better food practices, better lifestyle practices. So you will have lesser chance of getting a stroke or a heart attack or a diabetes or any other uh, lifestyle disease. So broadly, um, the, 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 this answer can be much longer uh, if I continue to say, but I think in interest of time, I would like to cut off here, uh, Vishal. Yeah. No, thanks a lot, Dr. Shivas. In fact, there's a related question ke, uh, in terms of what could be the future skill options after COVID. Okay, that's an interesting question. Yes, um, you will see a uh, definitive rise in uh, uh, definitive rise in new trends of uh, careers will shape up in healthcare. Uh, I'll give you uh, about five or six examples which could be the future careers post COVID. The first one is you will see a huge demand for phlebotomy technicians and medical lab technicians, these two trades, because India is a population of 1.3 billion. And you know, one of the strategies to tackle COVID is to screen the entire population over a period of time. So we need to screen um, either through a rapid test or if they have symptoms through RT PCR test. So for doing that, you need a large capacity of healthcare resources to do those tests. I think in that, uh, the phlebotomy technician collect the sample and also the medical lab technician who does this test in the diagnostic labs, we will, there will be a um, requirement of huge number of resources. And the second breed of resources that we would need um, in the hospitals now um, and outside the hospitals also are geriatric aids because going forward, there'll be a very limited mobility of geriatric uh, populations. The pa patients, are, patients are people who are above 60, 65, they are, they'll have a very limited mobility outside. So um, the care homes would need better trained uh, um, geriatric aids and home health aids. Then you will need uh, a lot of medical coders. Uh, medical coding becomes very important because uh, uh, the implementation of Aishman and Bharat is one important aspect because with COVID-19, there'll be a blend of, there'll be more involvement of Aishman Bharat uh, by the government in treatment of patients. So what happens when we, we need a disease to be coded? If you look at globally, all the healthcare systems which have universal healthcare, uh, the diseases are coded, the, the claim process is automated. So for that, you need um, these skills. And uh, similarly, you will see a post COVID, you will see a rise in, you, you will see a rise in demand for emergency medical technicians uh, and many such uh, and telehealth coordinators, this is one important thing I guess. Um, because as I told you, 60% of consultations are going to be remote consultations. You would need facilitation of those consultations either in a government primary health center or in a primary health care facility or um, in a smaller facility. So you need someone who can facilitate this consultation between a doctor and a patient who is sitting remotely. So telehealth coordinators uh, will also have a um, demand going forward. And data analysts, analysts, because um, we always predicted there would be a demand for data analysts in future, and now it becomes a thing because the data of population is very important for every country to monitor. So you need to have an electronic health, health record which will populate all the population data. I think government will start focusing on that. So we would need a lot of uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and data scientists uh, in healthcare particularly. 
So these, these will be some of the future skills, uh, Vishal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to expand this answer. When I say future skills, these are the new skills that will emerge and new demand that will emerge. But for the existing resources, that is the doctors, nurses who are working in both the public and private sectors, we will see there's a need for upskilling. The upskilling is required in critical care and emergency skills because most of the doctors um, are not trained in ventilator management skills. Most of the nurses are not trained in that. None of the technicians are trained in ventilator management except the respiratory therapists. But if you see an overwhelming of patients uh, going forward, there is an expectation that there could be a rise in the numbers and all. So in such case, when uh, when things go wrong, we need to be futuristically prepared. So all the doctors, nurses, the technicians and the frontline workers in healthcare, there's a need to train them, upskill them in critical care, emergency care. And uh, for future pandemics, I think we need to train them on pandemic and healthcare disaster management. So today we are not, we do not have curricula for this, so we are building a couple of messages, we are building curricula and, and we have already launched courses for doctors, nurses and technicians. So we will also launch the pandemic management program and also the public health and emergency and physical care programs very soon. Right. Thanks a lot, Dr. Shinas, for the elaborate response. So what I presume is like there will be uh, huge opportunities uh, on the clinical front, right? Uh, even in the non-clinical front, like the, right. the health coordinators, and you will require more managers. When I say disaster management, it's right. not just patients. You will require a lot of volunteers. You will require a lot of non-healthcare resources. We will plan in supply chain management. One of the challenges of the COVID is we had a huge supply chain issues of personal protective equipment, sanitizers um, at the beginning of uh, the start of this pandemic. Globally, there was this uh, supply chain uh, disruption. So uh, it is important now, there'll be a lot of manufacturing that will happen in India uh, for these, and there will also be a requirement of resources who will manage the supply chains. Uh, so the healthcare management also becomes a very critical uh, aspect. Right. Right. Thanks a lot. In fact, the next question is also quite related to the one which I just asked. So, so a lot of people wanted to know what are the career opportunities in the uh, administration or the management side of healthcare? As you know, healthcare is comprising of so many verticals, not just hospitals. So could you please elaborate on these uh, verticals, number one. Number two, in terms of the opportunities in the management side or the administration side. Yes. I think healthcare administration, healthcare management is very critical and having realized this, uh, our chairman, uh, Sir uh, Dr. Pratap C. Reddy, he was a visionary. He started this first healthcare management program in India way back in uh, 1998. I started Apollo School of Healthcare Management. And uh, so later we started uh, building these programs in various forms, like we started e learning programs in healthcare management. And there are various blends of programs. So, why healthcare management is uh, important? So, any healthcare institution runs on five pillars. When I say five pillars, these are the administrative cycles in the hospital, the clinical cycles in the hospital, the financial cycles in the hospital, the quality cycles in the hospital, and the technology cycles in the hospital. These five become pillars of running a hospital. So when you look at the administrative cycles in a hospital, right from a patient entering into the hospital, you'll find a security, right? So the management of security is a part of administrative cycle. And now post COVID, I think that becomes more robust with temperature screening. Um, with, you may have robots who will be receiving you and who will actually sanitize you before you get in. So we are also closely working with one of the leading uh, global institutions on the robotics of uh, building robots for healthcare. Uh, so uh, they, they will be, the security management is one aspect. Second, as you enter, you will find a front office, right? So you will get a registration. Right. Uh, this, the front office management is an um, administrative cycle. The supply chain management in a hospital is an administrative cycle. The human resource management, the marketing in a hospital, these are administrative cycles. The clinical cycles in the hospital, which is the second pillar, is the emergency room management, the intensive care unit management, the pharmacy management, the nursing management, um, the the OPD management, the inpatient management, this all becomes the clinical cycles in a hospital. The quality cycles in a hospital are, you see, um, the quality of the hospital are measured by the by its process quality. Um, you see, you you see an application of Six Sigma in healthcare. You will find specific hospital-related and healthcare-related standards like um, 
You must have heard about National Accreditation Board of Hospitals, NABA. You must have heard about yes. JC, Joint Commission International. These are the quality pillars of a hospital. Then you have technology cycles in a hospital, which are the biomedical equipment management, the, the CT scanners, the MRI scanners, the ECG machines within the hospital. You need a department to manage them. In addition to that, the, the technology cycles in the hospitals are emerging now. The data is the new oil. The data is going to be very critical going forward. So the technology, um, the technology departments in hospitals are more robust, more powerful. We have very high-end servers. We keep the data, the data is mined, the data, the data is clean, like in any other uh, IT organization. The data is anonymized, and the data is actually used for uh, predictive diagnostics. The data is used for clinical decision support. And uh, the government of India has also released the National Digital Health Blueprint in October 2019, very recently. So now the hospitals have very clear guidelines on how to use the data and how to use the IT. So these are the five pillars. So when it comes to healthcare management courses, um, I think most of them, even the, the healthcare management courses, as I told, there are five pillars, administrative, clinical, quality, technology, and financial cycles. The financial cycles include the hospital billing, the health instruments, receivable management, the government uh, receivable management, and the payroll of the hospital. These are the financial cycles in the hospital, the billing of the hospital. So, uh, if you see these five cycles, it is not possible for a doctor to run these five cycles. It is not possible for a CFO, a financial uh, a person qualified as a CA to run all these cycles. The clinical cycles have to be managed by clinicians. The administrative cycles have to be managed from by a, a able administrator. The quality cycles, it's someone who has got a play for quality, any graduate. Uh, the technology cycles, an engineer who wants to enter into healthcare and uh, apply his knowledge. So, if you think the healthcare management is varied, so you have opportunities right from even if you are a 10 plus to uh, intermediate, you have finished your intermediate and want to enter healthcare, we have a um, kind of opening up opportunities in the front office management. We look for youngsters who are very good in communication, to have that empathy factor in them, who could come and work in the hospitals, in the front office, in patient coordination, in health insurance management, in liaisoning with insurance companies. So there are a lot of opportunities. So rise from 10, 10 plus 2 to a graduate, to a nurse, to a doctor, everyone can take up this program. And we have, I would say globally, the best healthcare management program. It is best because uh, of two or three reasons. The one reason is we are pioneers in healthcare. So we, we have ran the healthcare system for the last three and a half decades. So we know that better. So you get teaching from some of the best experts in the industry. The second uh, aspect is um, we give an on-job training. There is an optional internship opportunity. And now post-COVID, now we are making most of our programs also in a digital mode. So anyone who wishes to continue with their work and join an e-learning program, you could do that. And uh, there are two, three options for us here. Uh, we, uh, people could enroll on our um, the direct Apollo Med Skill Industry Certification, which along with National Skill Development Corporation, NSDC, who is our partner, um, and the Healthcare Sector Skill Council. That is one certification. The second certification comes from uh, a program that we do, an eight month program that we do with Indian Institute of Management, IM Apollo Joint Program. And we also have tied up with Hyderabad Central University, one of the most prestigious universities. Um, it is rated in the top five universities in India and always rated the best. So we have a tie-up with Hyderabad Central University. We run, we run two variants of this program, postgraduate diploma in healthcare management and postgraduate diploma in hospital management. So all these programs are available for enrollment now, I think, uh, till Saturday of May. So if anyone is interested to enroll, please hurry up. We have limited seats for it and it is flexible learning. So you can work, you can enroll on this program and study from anywhere uh, in the world. And uh, the beauty of this program is if the, the students who pass out of this program get certificate from the University of Hyderabad and Central University. So you, you are eligible for government jobs and not just in India but globally because some of the students of HC are working in Canada, in US health systems and multiple uh, places across the world. So that's uh, the beauty of that study. So uh, if you need more details, I think this webinar is time-bound, so I don't want to expand further. So but if you need more details, please uh, 
um, write the email that is scrolling at the bottom of this webinar. I'll also call one of the members scrolling at the bottom. Vishal, yes. Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot, Dr. Srivast. In fact, there is a, a related question from a few uh, callers, which is uh, uh, coming to my screen. Uh, they're asking, what uh, is the typical percentage of employees working in the administration or the management side of any hospital? Because typically, people tend to believe that hospital uh, comprises more of clinical people and less of people from right. administration. So, so what is the typical percentage and uh, okay. what could be the probable job roles? So you did mention about some of the job roles, but if you can just specify a bit, especially for 10 plus 2 candidates. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, um, slightly expand this answer then. So for 10 plus 2 candidates, what are the various roles? So just to give you the, for the first part of the question, how much percentage of people are um, the healthcare administrators in a hospital? If you see the ideal proportion um, of a a number of uh, beds to a healthcare manager is 10 is to 1. Okay, that's the ideal proportion. So for every 10 beds, you're expected to have a manager, a managerial role. That means for a 500 bedded hospital, you need at least 50 managers, right? Uh, so, but in India, typically we will have a manager uh, for one in one for every 15 to 20 beds based on in which city the hospital operates and the patient load of the hospital and also the department uh, so if you have insurance tie-ups you will add more management resources and so on so the typical ratio is 10 is to 1 that's an ideal ratio uh, so based on number of beds you need to calculate that and in terms of what are the opportunities that exist so it's training players at 10th and 10 plus 2 the opportunities are you could uh, you could uh, you could enroll with us on a support services program okay support services is healthcare operations executive we have a course called hoe healthcare operations executive you can enroll on this program this is just a, a three months course where um, you will get an opportunity to get an insight into healthcare industry you will know how the front offices are managed how the patient workflow happens in a hospital how a hospital interacts with an insurance company what are the documents that you need to collect from the patient and how you need to um, interact with the patients and the patient attendants and so on. So this is broadly that I can say what are the skills that are taught and tele telephone etiquette and so on. Um, right. Then um, then comes uh, slightly for graduates. For graduates, um, there are the post who are doing postgraduate diploma in hospital management or an MBA in healthcare management. Uh, for such resources, you can expect, based on your experience in the past, you can expect anywhere to mid-management mid to a mid-to-senior role. Uh, someone who has got a tremendous experience in, say, you have already got 10 to 15 years of experience in some other industry and you're doing this program, you can expect a slightly higher role. Um, so there are roles spanned across the levels of um, uh, kind of a hospital institution for healthcare administrators. Right. Yes. Thanks a lot, Dr. Shinvas. Uh, in fact, uh, there's one interesting question. Like, since there are a huge number of dropouts after class 10th, after class 12th as well. So what could be the career opportunities and the courses across the spectrum, not just in the administrative side, also on the clinical side, if you could just briefly elaborate on the programs which can be uh, done by these students who are dropouts after right. 10th or 12th. So that would be great. Thank sure, you. Vishal. Actually, I've shared a couple of slides with the IT admin uh, prior to this webinar. If they can just pop it up on the screen. Sure. The two slides I just want to show for the benefit of non-healthcare uh, people because i know that there were there were over 5000 people who are uh, enrolled on this yeah. webinar so, so supply side challenge today this is a gross enrollment ratio in the school uh, in india from class 1 to 5 135 million kids are enrolling into schools and out of that close to 73 million are dropping out that means half of the students who are getting into schools by class 5 they are dropping out of schools and class 6 to 8, there are 67 million who are getting into class um, 6 to 8. And out of that, again, there's a huge dropout. I think about 11 million are dropping out at class 8. And class 9 to 12, 51 million are getting through. And after class 12, 27 million are dropping out. And uh, there are about 24 million who are getting into graduation. And out of that, 20 million are stopping their education at graduation. And four million are moving ahead and doing the post graduation. So this is a our gross enrollment ratio 
and supply side funnel. So there are 4 million postgraduates who are coming out and there are 24 million graduates, 20 million, 24 million graduates who are passing out and 51 million uh, people who are getting into class 12 and 27 million. So our, ta our target now in healthcare is the population of students who are dropping out at class 11 and 12. You must be wondering what do class 8 dropouts do? What do class 5 dropouts do? So right. these are the people who are targeted by other sectors like the plumbing sector, the electrical sector, uh, the mechanical sector like Maruti Suzuki, Mahindra, where they manufacture cars. They go into that particular area. Class 5 below, they go into housekeeping sector. But for us in healthcare, our target uh, population is someone who has actually dropped at 10th or 12th, which is the 27 million. And also someone who is passing out of graduation and looking for careers in healthcare. This is the supply side challenge. If I move to the next slide, which is the demand slide, um, if you see there is humongous demand because India has been adding about 100,000 beds, 1 lakh beds each year for the last four years and we continue to add now. I think post-COVID the scenario may change, the number of beds of intensive care may rise. But nevertheless, you would require doctors, you would require large number of nurses, you would require large number of lab technicians, emergency medical technicians and so on. So these ratios may even go up rather than coming down. So this is the demand that we have, about 74 million as we speak is the gap, skill gap that is there in uh, healthcare market. So this is the opportunity side. So when you specifically ask for 10 and 10 plus 2, what are the opportunities? The various opportunities. Um, I already told about the healthcare management options, which is healthcare operations activity. But beyond that, there are opportunities for these uh, 10 plus 2 kids. They can join in uh, uh, a diploma program created uh, uh, to a paramedical council or a university. Mm. For example, in Tamil Nadu, we are doing a diploma in medical lab technician, a diploma in uh, radi radiology technician, a diploma in, uh, say, cardiac care technician, a diploma in dialysis technician. So these are very high demanding areas. The 10 and 10 plus 2 students who wish to get into healthcare, they could join these programs. These are two year programs. And we also have uh, one year variants, six months to one year variants, which are affiliated to healthcare sector school council. These programs are like phlebotomy technician, pharmacy assistant, um, dialysis technician, and then operation theater technician, and so on. So we have multitude of programs for 10 10 plus two. Anyone who is interested to know more about this, you can always, as I mentioned earlier, you can write to ecareers at the rate apollomedicine.com, or you can call on one of the numbers that are flashing in the scroll bar below on the webinar. Please note them down, and we will we'll be happy to get in touch with you and address all your queries. Right. Thanks a lot, Dr. Shrinivas. Uh, the next question is, uh, uh, would there be any change in the program delivery mechanisms uh, post-COVID? What is your thought on that? Yes, I think this is um, the interesting question. This is a question on our business strategy as a whole. You see, um, going forward, okay, I think most of the learning will, will get into an e-learning mode. Okay, But in healthcare, can we really get everything into an e-learning mode? That's going to be a challenge because, um, but we would certainly go into a blended learning, which is an e-learning with a classroom experience as well as a hospital experience. I'll give an example of phlebotomy technician who collects the blood sample. So if you, you cannot teach how to uh, pierce the skin, get into a vein and draw the blood by showing you a digital video or by showing you a simulation or on an e-learning. Definitely we need to get this student to a simulated environment or to a hospital and give them an experience of drawing the blood. Without that, you cannot make a phlebotomy technician. But yes, how the program delivery is going to change, we are going to conduct a significant part of their sessions on e-learning just for their safety and for the safety of, because most of the parents are worried. We get calls from parents that can we send our, we don't want to send our students back to the classroom, the children back to the classrooms. Their worry is uh, meaningful, their worry is sensible in the current circumstances, but we don't want to stop their learning. So we are giving most of the sessions on uh, the video learning platforms like this or uh, or through an, uh, our learning management system that we have. But we will certainly require students coming to the hospitals, coming to our on-job training centers and simulation centers for the experience. So how the learning is going to change? In healthcare, it is going to be more blended in non-clinical programs where you don't require much of the patient interaction, 
we'll give them an option. For example, the healthcare management, anyone enrolling on a healthcare management program with us of a Hyderabad Central University or any program of um, that we certify with, along with NSDC, such programs, the students can skip the classroom sessions, which are live, which are uh, face to face. They can always attend our live sessions the way we do today. And they can always attend, uh, look at the content on our e-learning platforms. Uh, how the future learning is going to be, and um, I hope people will also allow to do that, and um, they don't want to spend a lot of time because in, in view of social distancing that we need to follow, even the classroom, um, the, the dimensions may change. Okay, there are a lot of changes that may come into the education industry. But it's a very interesting question. But that's a business strategy for, uh, a point as well. Right. Thanks a lot. Uh, the next question, Dr. Shinivas, is uh, what is the certification process at Apollo MedSkills? How do you certify students? What is the process? Uh, we all need to understand that Apollo MedSkills is a public-private partnership. Uh, we are tied up with National Skill Development Corporation, which is a skill development and architecture uh, venture. So uh, they have a direct partnership with us, both in terms of PCP and that. So most of our certificates are coming from uh, joint certificates of Apollo Med Skills along with the NSDC and the Sector Skill Council that we work with, which is Healthcare Sector Skill Council. And we also partner in areas where the regulation is there. Uh, for example, for doing a diploma in medical application, you need to have a university hire. So we have partnered with multiple universities across India. So the certificate comes from the university that we have tied up with. Um, similarly, uh, we have also made some uh, partnerships uh, with some of the institutions. For example, I am Bangalore certifies a general management program of health healthcare executives. Similarly, we are, we are partnering, we are in advanced state or stage of discussions with a couple of more uh, IIMs in the way that we, do with, uh, we did with Bangalore. Um, so there are many institutions that are coming forward to partner with us um, because healthcare is now the buzzword. Uh, healthcare uh, is always has been resilient in careers. So most of them would like to do a career in healthcare because these are generally resistant to it. Right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, the next question, Dr. Srinivas, is uh, there are a lot of healthcare professionals in this call, so they wanted to understand what are the opportunities for healthcare professionals who are from a medical background, including doctors, nurses, and allied health professionals, uh, opportunities within the country and outside the country as well. Okay. So, uh, there are a lot of opportunities, I, as I told you, doctors who wish to um, move into the allied areas like healthcare management or healthcare technology, we have uh, option of courses. We have partnered with um, some of the institutions to offer courses in healthcare, artificial intelligence, healthcare data science. Uh, we're building up programs in machine learning. So if doctor, because you need a domain expert in order to build software. So this is a uh, very critical for any startup, any technology startup to build a uh, healthcare innovation or healthcare product, you require a clinician role, a doctor, or nurse to be a part of their team. So there's a need for such courses, and there there will be there is going to be an increasing demand for health informaticians and also healthcare innovators or clinicians. So they can take up such courses. And the second is uh, the healthcare management program, which I've already mentioned. Any graduate, including clinicians, can do that. Third is if they want to do a global transition, particularly for nurses and doctors. Uh, we have tied with um, a few countries uh, with NHS UK, uh, and we also have partnership with a few countries in the Middle East, with Ministry of Health, and we also have partnership with some of the recruitment agencies uh, in few countries. So, what happens is, if a, uh, suppose a nurse wants to actually uh, go and work in UK uh, or in Dubai, uh, so generally there are two gateways for a clinician to clear. One is a language gateway. And second is a medical licensing or a nursing licensing gateway. That means if a nurse wants to go to UK, then she needs to meet a minimum norm of the language, which is English there. So they need to pass an English language examination at band seven. So we do programs in language. So any nurse or any doctor who wants to transition across, then they can enroll on such language program. The second is um, they need to clear the medical licensing exam or a nursing licensing exam of that country. So we also do provide training for those countries, those specific countries for their license. 
And then apart from this, we also do some training programs with universities as well. Um, one of one such partners is the University of Bolton. We do a training uh, healthcare management program. We do an MBA in healthcare management at the University of Bolton. When I say training, the student will learn one year in India and one year in UK. Uh, so the first, uh, suppose they're enrolling now, the first one year they would be studying in India and next year they would be maybe 21, 22. Um, 20 years, 2021, 20, 22, they will go to UK and study on campus at University of Bolton. So there are various international transition opportunities. Um, if anyone is interested, they can write to us. Uh, we will send you more details about it. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Dr. Shinivas. Uh, the next question, Dr. Shinivas, is like, uh, what are the uh, opportunities on the upskilling side and, and on the reskilling side, especially for uh, working professionals? not just from healthcare, but even from other sectors, because as we are uh, witnessing a huge uh, challenge across sectors, so many of uh, such professionals are looking for opportunities wherein they could uh, upskill themselves in certain areas related to healthcare. So they wanted to understand such opportunities. So Thank you. Multiple, multiple upskilling opportunities. Sir. It's very critical for one to upgrade themselves on skills. Um, so a few, few examples that I want to give. Um, we, we do routine workshops of ACLS and basic cardiac life support and basic life support on our simulation lab. Uh, this is a basic upskilling, but the, the doctors can enroll. We Apollo Med Skills is one part of the whole Apollo knowledge, which is a um, group of educational institutions. So we offer a lot of uh, programs for doctors in one of our institutions. So whether it is a diabetes uh, course or a, or a course in uh, cardiac care or critical care, um, we have uh, partnered with multiple universities abroad. So where does the certification come from? We are tied up with um, Royal Liverpool Academy in UK. We are tied up with the um, University of New South Wales in Australia. So multiple universities, uh, global universities are tied up with us and they certify. So if any doctor is interested to upskill them in any specific specialization area, we'll be happy to help. Please write to us. And similarly, nurses also have similar programs with medicines. We have specialized courses in emergency nursing, cardiac nursing, and uh, cancer nursing, oncology nursing. But these programs are industry certified programs. Uh, these are not Indian Nursing Council certified. These programs are valid in the corporate sector because there will be huge shortage of medical care nurses in ICU. So uh, these, these are programs that help them to upskill themselves and upgrade themselves within the hospital into the intensive care units. Similarly, we work closely with the government. Uh, for example, we did a beautiful program for all the doctors, nurses, and the technicians and support staff working in the government of Telangana hospitals. We have upgraded their skills. For example, the housekeeping staff uh, are the patient care coordinators who, who, is at, uh, who is at the reception of a government hospital who's supposed to take a patient on a wheelchair to an OPD. Uh, or to an ICU or to an emergency room or a stretcher, we train them how to transport the patient. This looks very simple, but it's very critical. The patient getting in a road traffic accident, coming in an ambulance, shifting of the patient is an art. You need to really immobilize their neck, you need to immobilize their spine when you move them. So, and how to use a wheelchair, how to, these are simple things. And for housekeeping staff, how to clean a hospital when a patient is on the bed. Um, these are this looks simple, but they are very, very critical in infection control. Similarly, doctors who are trained in 1980s, 1990s, who want to know the latest protocols of treatment for heart attack, um, then there are new protocols that emerge, new technologies come. For radiology technicians in Jarkhand, we have trained them on how to migrate from an analog radiology, analog x ray to a digital x ray. So, a lot of upskilling and reskilling programs we offer, and you can customize that. We work with uh, in Afghanistan, government of Afghanistan, in upstream, their radiology technician, uh, but we want to give years to work with them. So there are a lot of customizations possible. So all the institutional heads who are on this webinar who want to partner with us, to welcome, please write to us. And um, any institutions who are working in the area of CSR who want to contribute to this space, uh, you are also welcome to partner with us. Your uh, uh, value for the CSR strengths are going to be tremendous because we will be directly saving lives. And uh, any technology companies who want to partner with us, you are also welcome to uh, add some value in training your resources for building healthcare products. And any hospital institutions, we could upskill all your staff 
we could reskill them in certain areas as well. So we can customize. What I mean to say is the, the bottom line. What I impress, want to impress upon you, you can customize the program the way you need. Right. Thank you, Dr. Shinivas. So the next question is, uh, are there any self-employment opportunities in healthcare? Would you please uh, highlight on those? Oh, yeah. There, there are many self-employment opportunities. Um, I was mentioning about the phlebotomy technicians a while ago. The one who goes to home to collect the samples, right? So, uh, to home to collect the blood samples. Um, there are a lot of uh, diagnostic centers, including Apollo Diagnostics, Chirocase, or Lal Bag Labs. They give collection points to franchisees. Okay, so uh, these phlebotomy technicians either they can start on their own brand uh, a diagnostic lab in their rural India in, in the villages, or they can take a franchise of one of these uh, diagnostic centers and start their own cell phone product. Similarly, the pharmacy assistants can could start beginning their uh, rural pharmacies. So, but uh, this is very important now. I think people will start realizing that the expansion should happen in the area of need and. Uh, I'm expecting that um, a lot of people will get onto this role. Similarly, home care executives. Um, the Urban Clap um, has asked us actually that um, they want a lot of home health executives who want to be posted on their uh, channel. So anyone who is getting home geriatric aid or home health aid, who takes care of the geriatric population or the postpartum, someone who delivers a baby and they want a support. So we train the neonatal aides. So these young girls can come and help you in taking care of the baby. So these are some of the areas. And uh, similarly, Apollo Pharmacy will require uh, almost close to 4,000 pharmacy assistants every year. And the same demand is there with other competitive chains like MedPlus and other pharmacy chains. So the number of pharmacy assistant requirement is rising day by day. So these are some of the programs which provide a huge self-employment opportunity. Medical lab technicians can start their own diagnostic centers. So. Yes, there are a lot of self-employment opportunities um, and uh, people could join these programs as well. Right, so uh, there was one specific query from somebody looking for opportunity in health insurance. So could you please highlight on any uh, such opportunity which, which could be suitable for such candidates? Yes. So health insurance again has multiple opportunities. So okay, health insurance, um, uh, if you look at the composition of the health insurance company, you will have opportunity in health insurance marketing and health insurance operations. Okay, so when you see health insurance operations, whenever a claim is submitted to a health insurance company, okay, the claim undergoes a various. There's a process flow, uh, a 72 hour for process flow that claim undergoes, and there are a lot of health insurance executives they work there. If you're a clinician who wants to get into a health insurance industry. Yes, you can uh, you can enroll on a program which is coming up, which is a diploma in health insurance management, which we launched this year. In this program, you will learn how to scrutinize a claim. What are the key terms and conditions that underwriters in health insurance uh, do? So after this program, you can go and work as claim adjudicator in a medical claim adjudicator in the insurance companies. There are also insurance operational positions within the insurance company, which is like uh, liaisoning with the uh, third-party administrators, liaisoning with the uh, with the patients themselves, liaisoning with the hospitals. So a lot of opportunities um, in the third-party administration of claims, as well as insurance companies themselves. Right. Thank you, Dr. Shrinivas. So the next question is like, uh, are there any internship and job training opportunities for your students? Uh, who are looking for hands-on experience in, in the healthcare sector. Yes, yes, certainly. As I mentioned in the beginning of this webinar, that in healthcare, you cannot make everything into an e-learning mode, um, especially in the clinical areas. Okay, so you need the hands-on experience either on a patient or a medical simulation, and we have that infrastructure. Apollo Medicines has invested in some of the state-of-the-art infrastructure, and if someone wants to, we want to keep some open days uh, where people can come and visit our centers and see how our infrastructure is. So soon we will start that. So you could, if you, um, yes, there are uh, there are opportunities um, where you could come and see our centers and the, the on-job opportunities are always there. Wherever the hands-on experience is required, we strongly recommend that they need to come for the clinical on-job training. And we have skill knowledge partners across India, not just Apollo hospitals, but 
We have partnered with Tire to Tire Three Hospitals, where student will get a better experience, better hands-on experience in a uh, rather than a large corporate hospital setup. So we have skill knowledge partners, which are typically hospitals, diagnostic centers, where we provide on-job training to our students. Right. Thank you, Dr. Shivas. So the next question is like, uh, uh, like there are a lot of uh, doctors from Ayush background, Yunani, homeopathic, uh, okay. and other areas. So they would like to understand what are the opportunities for them in the sector. Uh, the Yunani and uh, the Ayush doctors also have a great demand. Uh, um, the, the Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha, homeopathy, uh, what Ayush stands for. Uh, most of uh, the doctors enroll on our healthcare management programs and shift their careers to us healthcare management. And uh, going forward, post COVID, I see a tremendous opportunity in prevention and wellness. And uh, that is one area uh, India has that wealth of this traditional medicine, uh, whether it is Ayurveda, Yunani, homeopathy, and Siddha. I think um, either you can get into prevention and wellness, you could get into corporate wellness programs by enrolling on our uh, program. A healthcare management program or you could get into prevention and wellness by pursuing programs on clinical nutrition so and prevention right so there is someone who has uh, uh, asked about uh, what are the courses uh, related to covid are there any programs related to covid which they can do and that can enhance the yes, vision yes. I, I welcome all of you. I welcome all of you to get into ApolloMedSchools.com. Go to the e-learning section. We have about seven to eight courses specifically focused on COVID. One course is actually a free course for everyone who could go and certify themselves. This is a very basic course. You must have gained this understanding. But very early when most of them are worried about COVID, we have started this program on prevention and awareness on COVID. But we have also started specific programs for doctors, nurses, lab technicians focusing specifically on their role how to how to take care of the patient what are the clinical management what are the new line of therapies that are emerging for treatment um, and the vaccine development so most of the clinical aspects are covered for these uh, clinical courses and for lab technicians what are the protocols in collecting the samples and so on yes we have specific courses for covid and uh, the lockdown period is a, a a, a kind of time where you have um, time is money i think you need to um, utilize this time properly please do go and enroll on some of the short-term programs that are available on e-learning whether it is an ai machine learning in healthcare or program in healthcare management um, that we offer in an e-learning mode healthcare operations executive program or if you're a doctor or nurse go and enroll on the uh, we have kept these programs at a very very low price i think 599 and so, and this is, uh, th these are some of the, th thank you, Madhuri. I think you have just uh, mentioned that. Thank you, Dr. Srinivas and Apollo for organizing this webinar. Thank you very much. We really um, enjoyed uh, speaking to all. We always wanted to give this information because it's available. So, we just have seven more minutes. Uh, you want yeah, to take some I'll just quickly uh, uh, just take one last question, though there are still many questions, but you have covered most of them. So one question, which is quite common amongst a lot of participants, is how does an e-learning work? Ankush Rathod has just uh, posted on the wall that he wants to become an emergency medical technician. I think you are a brave boy. So uh, we have opportunities. You can enroll on uh, EMT course. It's going to be very, very uh, challenging role, EMT, and uh, it will be very exciting. Uh, you will really enjoy um, working as an EMT. Yes, please. Uh, I'm sorry. There are some messages popping up. So no problem. In fact, yeah. In fact, uh, some of the queries are pertaining to how does an e-learning course work? What uh, it comprises of? What components it comprises of? If you can just, if you could just elaborate on that. Thank you. E-learning course. Okay. So what happens is, um, this is also a transition for Apollo Med Schools. Apollo Med Schools traditionally has been a classroom learning, but we have very quickly built a uh, robust LMS and started populating e-learning programs. How does an e-learning course look like? So you have to go uh, onto our website, uh, go to the e-learning section. You will find uh, courses which are being offered on e-learning. You select your course, uh, pay for it if it's a paid course, and then you get enrolled and you'll get a free access to a learning management system. You need to get onto that and you have content in various forms, either in the form of a video or in the form of uh, PowerPoint 
or a lot of textual content available, you could finish. And at the end of each module, this content is structured in modules. At the end of each module, you will have an examination. Or in some of the short courses, at the end of all modules, you'll have one final examination. After you finish these examinations, you can actually download the certificate uh, instantly from our learning management system. If you wish to have a hard copy of the certificate, you need to write to us and we will courier the hard copy of certificate to you. Learning is as simple as this. And um, I, I myself am learning too many things during the lockdown. I enrolled in a disaster medical program with one of the leading universities in the world. Uh, 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 PhD, so I'm finishing my thesis on that. So a lot of uh, learning opportunities are there during this lockdown. So I, I want all of you to utilize this opportunity and join the healthcare management program is a beautiful one. Any uh, non-clinical graduates or even clinical graduates who want to transition your career, now please don't hesitate. Just uh, get on to this program. So our, our teams will help you. Our career counselors will help you. You'll have some members at the bottom of this webinar you can call them feel free to call them and also write to us and uh, if there is any question that you want me to answer you can always request there and uh, that question will be directed to me and i'll be happy to answer your queries yeah thank you dr shinivas uh, i think we have covered a lot of questions I think yes i think there's one more question uh, we have four minutes david Manda asked what ethical dilemma would exist with the introduction of artificial intelligence in healthcare? So, um, table three, uh, it's a very, very good question and very um, kind of a timely question because the government of India has released the National Digital Health Blueprint. So, today, uh, the data guidelines are also mentioned there. So, we need to anonymize the data. You cannot use the patient name publicly, right? So, you need to have those security protocols. You need to have anonymization of data. We cannot use the data as such and do a machine learning and build some data analytics or in the healthcare. Yes, all these ethical factors are being addressed by a very high level committee in Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. And they're coming up with an updated versions of this National Digital Health Blueprint. All these ethical considerations will be duly considered when AI is applied uh, robustly within healthcare. Thank you. Yes, I think uh, good with time. Any any other pertinent questions, Vishal? I think we have pretty much covered most of the questions. And as you rightly mentioned, uh, if there are any further queries, they can write to us on the email IDs, which are uh, being displayed. Right. OK, fine. So um, I thank each one of you for your patient listening throughout the webinar today. I have really enjoyed uh, the conversation. Vishal has always been a, a patient host uh, on most of the forums. Uh, thank you, Vishal, for uh, hosting this webinar. Uh, second, I want all of you to be patient, be courageous, uh, graciously accept the change, um, and be safe. Keep safe with your families, maintain social distancing, and keep watching. Yeah, don't, uh, watch, uh, don't keep on watching news. Maybe watch news once a day uh, so that you don't get overwhelmed, overwhelmed with too much news. And then, um, you are yourself and family safe and i wish to see all of you in healthcare because healthcare requires frontline warrior and i want each warrior on this webinar to be a part of healthcare thank you thank you dr shivas thank you all participants uh, RK, radha krishna cfo has written it's quite a useful session thank you very much uh, RK, we will do more of these going forward Thank you all once again.